name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Alleluia. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Alleluia. Pray to the Lord. Peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the third Sunday of Easter, also known as Good Shepherd Sunday, is from Ezekiel chapter 34. For thus says the Lord God, Behold I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep. And I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the ravines and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. This is the word of the Lord. Be to the epistles from 1 Peter chapter 2. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting to him. Excuse me, but he continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Lord was known to them in the breaking of the bread. I am the good shepherd, I know my own and my own know me. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. 
This is the gospel of the Lord. mercy and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord, our Savior, the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Text is the Gospel lesson. The title is The Perfect Shepherd. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Dearly beloved in the Lord, today is Good Shepherd Sunday. Sunday, where our attention is turned to familiar and beloved texts, texts like Psalm 23. You probably know the first part of that. How does that go? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Some of you can just keep going. <laughs> it's a beloved psalm. The gospel that's been appointed is familiar and much-loved words. Jesus says that he is the good shepherd. Now, Dick LeBeau is sitting here and he's asking himself, why are we celebrating Good Shepherd Sunday now? We just got done celebrating or recognizing the Resurrection of Jesus and the Sunday after. Why is the first thing after Easter Good Shepherd Sunday? Maybe you weren't asking, but 
You're asking. You're asking now. Because Jesus was surely a shepherd before we got to Easter. Surely as he taught. Surely as he performed miracles. During the season of Lent, when he lays down his life, surely this is the evidence of him being a shepherd. And so he could, we could have celebrated, you would think, Good Shepherd Sunday before. But we couldn't. And so what I'd like you to consider today is why we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday right away. On Easter. Before we get to that, we should recognize that we are the charge of many shepherds. Parents, teachers, pastors, there are different government officials, people who take care of of us. Interestingly, the book of Ezekiel, we didn't really hear it so much here, but in places around the text for us, we find that God is displeased with all those who call themselves shepherds in Israel. That is, the prophets, the priests, the kings, these all have been given charge over over the the people of Israel. Okay? So what I want you to recognize is we have many shepherds. Some are better. Some not so good. But none are the good shepherd because all of the many other shepherds have various weaknesses. Do I need to point them out as you read the news and consider what's going on? I can tell you, I'll just say this, that none of these shepherds are the good shepherd because sometimes they work at cross purposes with the God of all creation. That does not make them a good shepherd at all. Also, let's be honest, many of the shepherds who have charge over us, over you, don't know you. They certainly don't care about you. Many shepherds are self-interested and care for themselves. These are all real issues. Let me share with you one more final problem, weakness, if you will, of all the shepherds that have watch over us here on the earth, and that is their work will always be incomplete. It will never be fulfilled. Why? Because they die. And so there are many shepherds Some better than others. None are the good shepherd. The good shepherd, we've been told today, is Jesus. He is not a shepherd, he is the shepherd. And not only is he the shepherd, he is the good shepherd. And I've told you this before, I'm going to tell you again, that good here does not simply mean he's swell. Good here means perfect, complete. There is nothing lacking. Everything that should be true of a shepherd is fulfilled in Jesus and more. That's what we mean. And I'd like, to, and there is so much that could be talked about. We're not going to talk about it all, but I do want to organize our thoughts today using some catechetical terms. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, serves as prophet, priest, and king. Remember that from confirmation class? 
Okay. Jesus is the prophet. What do prophets do? They reveal the will of God. They tell the people what is on the mind of God. They direct. They lead and say, here's where you should go. Here's what you should do. Or this is what God is calling you to. They are quite literally a mouthpiece of God. But Jesus isn't simply a mouthpiece of God. He is God. I don't think it's an accident that Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Did you catch that? I am the good shepherd. When Moses was talking to the Lord, and he said, who should I say is sending me, God? And God gives him his name, and he says, tell them, I am has sent you. Who is God? I am who I am. Remember a few weeks ago, Jesus stood before the Jews, and he said, before Abraham was, I am. The Jews picked up stones to throw at Jesus because they knew exactly what he was saying. Jesus was claiming to be God. It's no mere idle claim. Jesus comes to reveal to you God's perfect and holy will in all its completeness. And here's the thing. As one who is resurrected from the dead, he still speaks. As one who lives, Jesus even now is at work in creation, revealing and making known the very mind of God. He's the perfect prophet. He's also the perfect priest. If you've got nothing to do tonight, you really should read through the book of Hebrews, especially chapters 4, chapter 7, and chapter 9. Because you read through the book of Hebrews, and you find out that Jesus is the perfect high priest. And here's just a few reasons why. Jesus is the f- perfect high priest Because he is able to sympathize with our weakness. You ever notice that when war veterans and mothers get together, they share the stories and they talk to one another? Why? Because the rest of us who are not war veterans or mothers don't know what they've experienced. We could listen, but we can't really sympathize, understand, speak into that experience. Jesus is the perfect high priest, the writer of the Hebrews says, because he is able to sympathize with our weakness. He has experienced everything that we experience as human beings. The only difference is he accomplished it without sin. And so not only does he know our weakness, he knows how to defeat our weakness, and he also speaks on behalf of us to free us from our weakness. He can deal gently with the ignorance and the wayward, the writer to the Hebrews says. He can be patient. Not only that, but as our high priest, Jesus has entered into the holy place, the most holy place. And we're not talking about a place here on earth made by human hands. We are talking about heaven itself. Jesus, by means of his own blood, has entered into the very presence of the Father. And in the presence of the Father, 
Jesus is talking about you. Have you thought about that? He is interceding for you. His blood, his own blood sacrificed, the writer does the writer to the Hebrews says he presents before the Father so that right now you can have a clean conscience. You now know that God has absolutely nothing against you, and he never can. Jesus is, oh wait, I almost forgot the most important part. Maybe not the most important part, it's all important. But this gets to why we're celebrating this on Easter. The writer to the Hebrews says, I don't want you to miss this. The reason why Jesus is the perfect high priest is because he serves in this function with an indestructible life. I'd like to make sure you're all with me. Could you please say that with me? Indestructible life. Aaron's priesthood was weak and it failed because he died. Jesus is perfect because he lives. He can save us utterly because he utterly and forever lives. So he's the perfect high priest. And not only that, but Jesus is the perfect, the complete king. Jesus is already God, right? Yeah. However, he came to be a human being just like you and me. And as a human, he was the victim in our place. He suffered in our place. But now, he lives. The perfect prophet the perfect priest, and now the perfect king. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to Jesus. He exercises full lordship. Everything, all human history is now under the guidance, the rule of Jesus. It must do all History, all creation, must finally bend its will and serve the Lord, the Son of God, Jesus born of Mary. And notice that this Lord, this King, loves his constituents. This King, we're told, knows his sheep. He knows you. He loves you. He loves you, and so he fights for you. He fights for you, and so he even died for you. And now that he has risen from the dead with an indestructible life, he's still fighting for you. The only difference is he can't die anymore. Isn't that good news? (laughs) The enemy of all of your enemies can't be destroyed. Jesus is the perfect king. I kind of feel like this inspires some confidence in us. Yeah? Does this give you confidence? In other words, the one who has charge over you is the perfect shepherd. He does everything well as he shepherds you. And notice that he's the perfect shepherd, not simply because he died for you out of love, but because he rose for for you in victory. (laughs) 
every enemy that seeks to undo you must fail. That's a confident thought. Because your good and perfect shepherd has dealt with sin on the cross and has been proven victorious in his resurrection, sin has no mastery over you. We're dealing with sin for a while, but it cannot master us. Another enemy, death. We're dealing with death, but death does not have mastery over us. Whatever you're experiencing right now, whatever enemy has set itself up against you to be your undoing cannot prosper. Because Jesus is your good shepherd. And all things work for him. Even death itself must serve his purpose, which he's revealed to you to love you. <clears throat> so then, if Jesus is our good shepherd, and the reason why he's our good shepherd is not simply because he li- laid down his life for us, but because he rose from the dead and cannot die again, what's left for you? What's left for you is simply to follow. You have a perfect shepherd. What else are we going to do but gladly and willingly follow him as he proclaims God's will to us and leads us in ways that are actually true and good as he continues to pray on our behalf so that we have confidence with God as he rules over all things so that even our enemies, even our own sinful flesh cannot undo us but we must be victorious. What's left for you is simply to listen to his voice and go where he goes. That's what we're doing today, friends. Here we listen to God's voice, to Jesus' voice, and he's tuning our ears. He's tuning our ears, so continue to pay attention all week long. Open up your Bibles and read from his word all week long, every day. Listen as your good shepherd speaks to you, because as he tunes your ears, then you go out the rest of the day, and you listen, and you begin to actually hear his voice as he guides you and leads you into things that matter and that are true and that are good, ways to serve, ways to love, ways to be cared for. There are many, many shepherds that we have, some of them, if we're honest, we're just sort of putting up with. But there is only one perfect shepherd. And that's Jesus. And that means one thing for you. Finally and forever, you live. That's what's left for you to do. You live. You live under him in his kingdom and serve him in righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. And just as he has risen from the dead, he lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us met and 
for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the increase of faith in Christ who bore our sins and for inspiration to follow his example who suffered and did not threaten, who was judged and did not condemn, and who commended his spirit to the Father, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church, that God would send faithful shepherds to care for his flock here and scattered throughout the world, and that he would keep them devoted to Christ and his truth, and so turn them in dutiful service toward his people, that God would spare us from hirelings who serve ego, belly, or the world's doctrines, and that he would give discerning ears to his sheep to listen for the voice of Christ, our good shepherd. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of good government, that as the Paschal Lamb has wrought peace between man and God, so he would grant peace and good days also to our citizens and between the nations of the world, and that we and all our neighbors may lead quiet lives in godly contentment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for our risen Christ, the first fruits from the dead who has secured forgiveness for our troubled consciences, that he would also bless with temporal health those who suffer, remembering especially Maxine, Shannon, Glenn, Vicki, June, Kara, John, Dee, Jenny, Gail, Keith, and Dwayne, and that he would grant us aid not only in this moment, but also true immortal health in the world to come. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who are members and the pastor at St. Paul in Holstein, that as sheep of the Good Shepherd, they would continue to have their ears tuned to his voice and follow. For those who serve God's sheep in many and various ways, remembering especially the Nebraska District, the Reverend David Preuss family, and Revive Ministries, that the Lord would bless and prosper their work to console, to heal, to help, and to proclaim good news. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for the fellowship of the church, that our shepherd would bring us at last with all his saints to share in the feast that has no end. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, out of your fatherly goodness, you remembered us poor, miserable sinners and given your beloved Son to be our shepherd, not only to nourish us by his word, but also to defend us from sin, death, and the devil. Grant us your Holy Spirit that even as this shepherd knows us and helps us in every affliction, we also may know him, trust him, seek help and comfort in him, heartily obey his voice, and obtain eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord. Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death. And by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Our Lord and our God. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, 
which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen and preserve you, both body and soul, to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Please stand. pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.